Now let's talk about production of insulin. Insulin is very important as it is secreted by pancreas from beta cells of islets of Langerhans. Now tell me one thing, what is the function of insulin? Function of insulin is the control of glucose in blood. Control glucose in blood. With the help of biotechnolo biotechnological tool, it's easy to produce this insulin in the laboratory condition. Let's see how they are produced. For this, we take a particular cell. In this experiment, I have taken E. coli cell. So what is this? This is a E. coli cell. In the E. coli cell, two type of chromosomes they are present. One is called as a bacterial chromosome. So this is what? Bacterial chromosome. This is bacterial chromosome. Whereas the second one, this rounded structure, this is called as plasmid. Now, what is plasmid? Plasmid is considered as a extra nuclear DNA and plasmid act as a vector. Now what I have to do? I have to insert that gene which is responsible for the insulin production. On the right side, this is a human cell. This is what? Human cell. From the human cell, I have extracted this DNA which is responsible for production of insulin. So I can write it as a insulin gene. Right? I have taken out that gene. This is the place, this is in yellow color which shows that insulin gene is present in it. Now what I will do? I will take out that particular gene which is responsible for production of insulin. Similarly, I will take this vector. What I will do next? I will treat both of these DNA with restriction endonucleases. So what I will use? Restriction endonuclease. Now, what is restriction endonuclease? Restriction endonucleases, these are those enzymes which has a capability to break double-stranded DNA. And as you can see that breakage has occurred, what I have got is the sticky ends. Sticky ends. Normally, restriction enzyme, they can produce two type of ends. One is called as a sticky end and another is called as a blunt end. For the production, normally sticky ends the, are used because same type of sticky end will be produced by this. Similarly, the same type of sticky ends will be produced by this. So that whenever I'll combine these two type of DNA, what I will get is a recombinant DNA so that they can easily combine together. When I'll combine these two together, the thing which I will get over here, this is called as a recombinant DNA. This is recombinant DNA. That means it is that DNA which carries this particular foreign gene. This is our gene of interest. Now what I will do next, I'll take one cell. I'll take one cell and that cell will be plasmid free. This is plasmid free E. coli cell. Plasmid free E. coli cell. What next I will do? I'll insert this recombinant DNA into this E. coli cell which is plasmid free. What I will get next is recombinant cell. Now this cell will be called as a recombinant cell. Now what I will do next? I'll culture these cells in the fermenters. Culturing. Now the culturing will be done and later on what I will do, I will take out the insulin which is important for us. And this can be introduced into the human beings, into those patients who cannot produce insulin, whose insulin is not produced by their pancreas. 
Now let's discuss a question related to recombinant insulin. The question states that the presence of which of the following in pro-insulin make it different from insulin. Whenever a insulin is synthesized by the pancreas, it is synthesized in the form of pro-insulin. Now listen to this very carefully. Pro-insulin is that insulin which is in inactive form. If any, this pro word is written before any of the word, that means that is in their inactive form. So what we have to do? We have to convert this into the insulin. For this, the post-translational modification is done. Let's see what is the basic difference between pro-insulin and insulin. As I have already discussed with you, the insulin is made up of three chains. I am talking about the pro-insulin first. In the pro-insulin, the three chains they are present. One chain is called as an A chain. Second is called as a B chain. And the third one is called as a C chain. C chain. When we see the exact structure of these, we can see that the disulfide bonds, they are present in them. Disulfide bond. Let's label this. This is a peptide A or chain A. This is a peptide B and the connected the connection chain is called as a peptide C. Peptide C. Now, this is called as pro-insulin. This is what? Pro-insulin. Right? Now, what I have to do? I have to make it into a functional form. Now, what will happen? The re reaction that will occur, that is called as post-translational modification. Post-translational modification. That means, I have to convert this pro-insulin form into the active form. Now what will happen? This C chain which is present like this, this peptide chain, they will be removed. Now let's see how they are removed. But these are the two chains, they will be left and another is that, this is another chain, peptide C will be left. Right. And in between these two chain, what I have is a disulfide bond present. Disulfide bond present. This whole structure is called as active form or insulin. And what is this? This is a C peptide. This is a C peptide. Now, let's come back to the question. The question, in the question, we have to find out the difference between the pro-insulin and the insulin. So the correct option is option number C, which indicate the C peptide is not present in insulin.